welcome to episode eight of Lex Education, the podcast where me, comedian Laura Lex, um, learns. Sorry, an email came in and I got distracted. I'm just going to start again. You've got a very wet mouth today, Laura. Have I? Is this something <laughs> you can hear that sloshing around? I just had my lunch. I might be full of saliva. Yeah, that's that's horrible. <laughs> Hang on, let me dry my mouth out. Hello and welcome to Lex Education, the dry mouthed <laughs> podcast where me, wet mouthed Laura Lex, tries to learn science from Ron. Normal mouth Ron. Now you have to say hello, I'm Ron. Hello, I'm normal mouth Ron. <laughs> Do I still sound wet mouthed? Um, go like that. No, that sounds okay, like a I normal dried out mouth. Okay, I'll just hang my mouth out the window for a minute. How are you, Ron? I'm good. I'm good. It's um, it's very humid today. Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Off to Austria tomorrow. That's exciting. Yeah. Oh, off to Bratislava tomorrow as well. Oh, whereabouts are you going in Bratislava? Bratislava. Oh, okay. Is that the city? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slovakia is the country. <laughs> yeah. Bratislava's nice. I've been there. It looks like Chichi Chichi Bang Bang country. I hope you have a lovely time. Uh, we have, right, well, the big chat from last week's episode has been the Mackie song. Um, we've had some theories as to what the Mackie song might be. Uh, what have we got? We've got, um, you could rhyme Mackie like Jackie Wilson um, says over Desi. Uh, but I think it's more likely you've gone with something like she's a lady, but singing she's a baby and now, making the one, whoa, 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 woofing noises. That one does get my vote for best because it is closest like um, time wise to the actual cover. I do sometimes sing um, the Elephant Parade from Jungle Book to Mackie. She's a military hound. She's a military hound. Woof, two, three, four, with a woof, two. I do sing that one quite a lot. Uh, but no, that's not it. Catherine guesses, oh, Mackie, well, you came and you gave without barking. And I gave you a toy, oh, Mackie. It's quite good. No bad, no bad at all. Uh, Catherine's other suggestion was, uh, you got to speed her up, and then you got to slow... Her. I don't know the tune well enough to this one to do it. Because if you believe that a stick music. can hit the top, you got to play around. I don't know the tune well enough there, but a good, a good shout, Catherine. Um, do you want to sing some of Carol's ones? Um, everywhere you go, always take the Mackie with you. Everywhere you go. Carol also suggested, um, because she's Mackie, clap along if you think she's the cutest dog in town. I liked Scotty's suggestion of the Mackie Rainer. Mm. Huh? Mm. That's pretty Very good. good. Yeah. And uh, Jay also said, it immediately jumped to Black Dog by Led Zeppelin, even though I know Mackie isn't black, probably because of Shooting Stars, where they used to sing He's a Baby about Matt Lucas. Uh, and you can make Mackie's a baby scan quite nicely as a parody of now the that's parody. very close. That is actually one of the lyrics in my actual song. So I will sing you the Mackie song at the end of this episode. Uh, we'll just tease you out a little bit longer. Ooh. I wash my hands of it. I think it's a terrible <laughs> idea. Uh, also, we put up the first Lex Experiment video this week. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but on YouTube, you can go to YouTube and watch our good video of um, making cornflower soup or cornflower burgers. Um, basically, a liquid that is a solid. So you can pop over and watch that. And Matthew wants us to now extend that and do the pudding cornflower on a speaker as our next Lex Experiment. So we'll add that to the list of Lex Experiments that we will get round to doing. Um, but for now, we're going to going to jump into the episode it's uh chemistry three and we're back at looking at atoms and the periodic table ronnie honks low down dog it sounds like you've got a little motorbike on your lap <laughs> but it's a little tiny purring cat oh but i can't get rid of her no she's delightful i mean it 
it'd be OTT to get rid of your cat just for a podcast. Um, what are we learning today? We're chemistry. Are we chemistry this week? We are chemistry lesson number three. Chemistry three. We must be near the end now. There can't be that much. We are in the most in in the subject that we like the most medium amount. Chemistry. <laughs> Is the cat just tying herself up in your headphones, Cor? Yes, she is. She's knocking my headphones into the microphone. Does she like yeah. being tied up? Um, probably. She is a fucking creep. Ew, not in a sexy way. I suppose they <laughs> like playing with strings, cats, don't they? Yeah. Ew, I can't believe you thought about your cat's sexual proclivities. <laughs> She's a creep. She is a creep. <laughs> okay. What was happening last time? Oh, it was all those isotropes. Yeah, we learnt we learnt a bit more about atoms. Yeah, and, all right, and stuff. So today we're going to recap a little bit of stuff because it just came up in the syllabus again, um, and then we're going to talk about um, the periodic table, which I think you'll find quite satisfying because I've just got it in front of me, so that'll be easy. Yes, we were just going to name things that were on it. Yeah, last one was all about protons, neutrons, atomic mass, size of atoms. Protons and neutrons are good words, aren't they? They just sound so sciencey. They sound like what they are as well, while not necessarily meaning anything. Yeah, neutrons are neutral, protons are positive. Electrons should be called negatrons. Well, um, the antimatter version of an electron is called a positron. Well done, Uh, science. Good naming skills. Yeah, so we are, yeah, diving back into atom structure. So the first bit that they want us to know about is basically about how electrons are organised around a nucleus. How Can you electrons remember? are organised around a nucleus? Yes. Can you remember anything about this? We've touched on it sort of briefly. They're in rings. Um, mm-hmm. And the the... There's something about the smaller the atom, the fewer things fit on the ring. Or is it like the closer the ring is to the nucleus, the fewer mm, sad boy electrons fit on the ring? So, like, the first ring holds two, and then the next one holds four. Yeah, exactly. Um, So... Yeah, they, they come in different... Um, the, the syllabus wants us to talk about them either in shells, because they're not really rings, because it's like a 3D arrangement, um, or energy levels, because there's different energy associated with the different electrons. Okay. Shells uh, is fun, except it's not really a shell, though, is it? Because it's not solid, it's just whizzing about. It is just whizzing about. Force fields. Let's call them force fields. Um, we'll call them shells or energy levels. <laughs> <laughs> we, sh- we shan't be renaming Do you know what? I might start making a list of things I need to write to AQA slash science about to tell them they've got wrong. Calling them force fields. <laughs> yeah. What are we supposed uh, to be calling it? A shell. A shell. It's yeah. not a shell. Because as we've proved, Mendeleev fired all that radon at the gold and it got through. And if it was a shell, that wouldn't have happened, would it? That was Rutherford. We'll be talking about Mendeleev later on. Peas! No, that was Mendel. Oh. Damn. Do you know what Mendeleev did? Nope. He invented (laughs) the periodic table, so it's kind of (gasps) funny that you bring him up. Oh! Where do you even know that name from? I thought he was the pea guy. (laughs) (laughs) No. Um... Yes, so the the closer in the ring... Why is your uh, cat trying to milk that blanket? Um, she always does a little stampy dance before she lies down. Like tenderising it. Uh, um, right, okay, so in in the force fields, you can fit only so many electrons because, like, when that force field's really near, there's only so much space around the thing and they're, they're charged so they can't get near each other. Yes. Um, yeah, like, you learn at A level that they are held in specific spaces, but we don't need to know about that. We just need to know about the shells. Man, I was doing the longest burp while you were saying that. I'm proud of you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they can only lose slash gain electrons to slash from the outermost, the outermost force field. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I remember when the party looks good on another isotope electron. No, atom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> the electrons hop over to listen to that sweet, sweet Marley. Exactly. Yeah, so the periodic table is then organised in the structure of these electrons. Oh, my God, this cat needs to, like, settle the fuck down. Yeah, she's into electrons. Oh, she's just lying, lounging on my desk now. Yeah. Sexy cat. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Uh, in the first row, there are only two electrons Hang in Hang on, there. which one's a row? A row is Across. left to right. Yeah, OK. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I get so confused with that when I'm trying to do anything on Excel. Ugh. Right, a row. So that's just so an acrosser, and helium. An acrosser, yeah. An acrosser <laughs> is is only um, the first one is only hydrogen and helium, right? Yeah. Because there's yeah. only two in that one. Yep, they're the little edges, the little towers on either end. Yeah, um, and then so the next row out is eight. Uh, electrons can fit on it, so there are eight elements in that acrosser. Is that just coincidence? No, because... No, shut up, Laura. I didn't say that. <laughs> you mean because the periodic table is organised by these things? No, it's just that you, you said, oh, it fits eight electrons and there's eight of them. And I was like, oh, that's a coincidence. But then I was like, no, it isn't. It's that one electron is one thing. Anyway, don't worry. But then the next one down, row three, that also has eight things on it. Yep, so the third energy level slash shell also can only hold eight. So why are they different to the things on row two? Because it's still a level out, it's just another level that can only hold eight. I understand. You, so yeah, there's yeah. three three force fields, but still the outer one holds eight. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the one underneath that... Yeah, that's is got loads bigger. now. Yeah, that's got an extra ten. Whoa, that's a big jump. Yeah. Four um, and five seem to have ten. Then six and seven. Hmm. Maybe they have will, loads more. Yeah, they will have asterisks to the lanthanides and actinides. They do, Ron. They do. Yes. Um, which is basically, those just represent the extra, um, the extra ones. Why aren't the, they in the table? Because they wanted the... The, the start and finish of the periodic table to all be in columns together because the columns also have meaning. So what and by they... column, I mean up-downers. <laughs> I get that. So if you put all these dot-dot-dotters back in, then radon it's... and organasson yeah, it's, it's in the, the same, same thing as helium. Yeah, it's in the same way that higher up, there's like a gap in between some yeah. of them. So, yeah. but are these, do these, um, what are they called? Lactoses and asteroids, they're different in some way, are they? Um, that, what are they? What's a lactaminoid, lanthanoid? I don't think they have any sort of cohesive properties, the, the lanthanides and actinides. Um, Should I just I might... cross those out? I might be wrong. It's, um, you know, I was just saying that at A level, you learn about the specific shapes that the energy shells are in. Yeah. The lanthanides and actinides, I believe, um, are the elements that are in the, the, the one, one specific shape of this. All right. I'm just going to scribble those out on my one because I don't need them. Um, go for it. I don't think they'll come up again. Good. <laughs> Goodbye. So, as I was saying, the up-downers yep. also um, mean something. We kind of went through this before when we were talking about um, how many electrons they have in their outer shell. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So every, every element in up-downer one yep. has one electron in its outer shell. Every element in up-downer two has two yeah. electrons. Yeah. This gives them similar properties. Yeah, they all live on the same street with the same type of house. I mean, yeah, I liked it. <laughs> um, can you, 
remember slash deduce why they might react similarly under similar circumstances? It's similar parties. Similar numbers of, pop, like, sad boys at the parties. So they're the same amount of likely to lose or gain a sad boy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like, let's take, um, let's take a look at Group 1. Group Lockdown one. one. We've got Manchester United versus Liverpool. Don't Man, do your fucking cat. Yeah, <laughs> she's losing. <laughs> she's, all I can see right now is just whiskers off screen. Uh, <laughs> I love it Lockdown. when my pet isn't the one destroying a recording because it's so often my dog. Yeah, at least she's quiet though, apart from running around knocking things over. And purring and yowling. <laughs> Does she ever do that like row? like cat noise not like that much of um uh, an extended yowl but yeah. sometimes when she's having the zoomies she'll go like wow <laughs> man she looked at you like you were a piece of shit when you did that yeah she's angry because she hasn't been fed yet yeah but she gets fed like every 20 minutes yeah she gets fed three times a day yeah that's how much you think she gets fed judith feeds her every time she <laughs> looks a little bit sad <laughs> Yeah, but Judith isn't around so much anymore. Oh, where did Judith go? Is Judith okay? <laughs> She's in the office. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you made it sound like she'd part-time moved out. Yeah, Judith isn't around anymore. Anyway. Okay. What are we talking about? Sad boys, yeah, so they're, they're the same amount of like likely to lose or gain a sad boy. Yes. Up, down, or one. We call them the alkali metals. Yeah. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Love them. They only have one electron in their outer shell. Likely to lose it. Super easy for them to lose it. That sad boy just wants to go and find some happy puss elsewhere. Woo! <laughs> um... But they're all in the same group, so they have similar properties. They are soft, shiny metals that can be easily cut with a knife. Hydrogen's not a metal. Um, it's not one of the alkali metals. Oh, no, you're right. It's in its own little blue colour that means nothing. Yes. Mine are in colour code, so my alkali metals are in green. I understand. And mm. then next to them, in a slightly different green, I've got the alkaline earth metals. Yeah, that's your beryllium. Beryllium, magnesium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, iridium, scandium, and yttrium. I went on too far then. Scand <laughs> scandium and yttrium are... Oh, Linehan's hatefuls, transition metals. <laughs> Lots, most of them are transition metals, I think. So, um, yes, so they are soft, shiny metals that can be easily cut with a knife, and they are so reactive that... Um, Unless the knife was made with a different one of these metals. And then you're just mushing metal putty together. Well, it depends. Um, the higher up you are, um, so lithium is a little bit harder than sodium, which is a little bit harder than potassium. And then when you get down to cesium... Um, Potassium's I think it's metal? Yes. Isn't potato full of potassium? Yeah, that's bananas, but... <laughs> yeah. Am I just eating metal in a banana? You're full of metal, mate. What? You know, there's like there's iron in your blood. Yeah, but not metal iron, like a different blood iron. Yeah, metal iron. Metal? Yes. Bananas are made of metal. They have metal in them. All of your cells have metal in them. Most elements are metals. This is crazy. Like, you know, sodium chloride, salt. Sodium's a metal. Is it? Yeah. It's an alkali metal. We were talking about it many <laughs> moments ago. <laughs> God, the world is messy, isn't it, when you start thinking about it? It's What's actually it? quite neat and tidy when you turn nah. a fucking swamp for a brain like you. <laughs> Kind as I have a swamp <laughs> for a brain. Not I just kind. don't think things can be metals if you're if they're bananas. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. I'll give you that most of the banana is not metal, <laughs> but it has a lot of metal in you it. Think 
Are they that soft that you eat in a banana and you can't feel it? No, well, it's potassium ions, mainly. There's not going to be just, like, little nuggets of metal in there. It's potassium in ion form and used in different uh, compounds and stuff within it. Oh, I can hear an ice cream van. Who's annoying you more, me or the cat today? <laughs> the cat asked to come in and now she's just running in circles around me. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, I asked you to do this podcast with me and now it's horrible. Um, okay, so everything is metal and full of holes and pushing me. You can see how this podcast is freaking me out in general, <laughs> can't you? I'm like, hey, what's a banana? It's a fruit. It's soft and squishy. Ah, ah, it's metal. And if you stand on a banana, the metal banana is pushing you up into the air. And none of it matters anyway because 99.9% of it is all empty space. Exactly. Everything's vibrating. Jesus. I think people should just... If, if, if people knew this... They'd just be wandering around throwing up everywhere out of sheer People pride. do know this. No, the we average... Are doing, <laughs> we are doing a GCSE <laughs> syllabus. The average person isn't sat there thinking this is a metal banana full of holes. <laughs> yeah, just swamp brain. They're not. <laughs> they are so reactive. <laughs> What are? Uh, hang on. The alkali metals. Back yep, to the metals. Yep, yep, yep. Um, Sorry. Beryllium, magnesium. Oh, I remember magnesium. Yeah, you can, like, set it on fire just in air, can't you? Uh, it, like, flares yes. and burns real bright, I think. Yes, but we are talking about the alkali metals, not the alkaline earth metals. Oh, sorry. Back again. Lithium, sodium, bananas, rubidium, cesium and francium. Okay. Yes. They are very, very reactive, so when you cut said Did they give you lithium shiny... when you were crazy in the past? Sorry, Ron, yeah. I will stop in a minute. But was it lithium, like a, a drug for... Yeah, depression? it's like a mood suppressant, I think. Yeah. It's, um, there's a Nirvana song called Lithium. Would that have just been some metal? No, it probably would have been in ion form, I guess. Well, like a lithium a salt. Okay, so these guys, they're super reactive. They're like stroppy wild boys. They're the wild boys of the periodic table. Yes. So, when you cut said soft, shiny metal with a knife, they're so reactive that they quickly, like, grey up and go matte in the air because they oxidise. And when you have them in metal form, you have to keep them stored in mineral oil um, so that the air never touches them. Ooh, all right. What do you think happens to their reactivity as you head down the group? Um, gets stronger, gets more intense. Can you hazard a guess as to why? Uh, just bigger. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's like, the crux of it. Because even though it's got one saboy in its outer force field, there's loads of other saboys underneath it, and in order to have loads of saboys, it's got to have an equal number of happy boys. So there's just, it's just a bigger thing. So it's it's got more charge, hasn't it? Because it's got more magnets. It's sound like Nadine Dory is talking about Channel Four. <laughs> <laughs> I could run for Minister of Science in the current cabinet <laughs> yeah, at the probably moment. Good. Um, uh, kind of. It's, bit, it, it's a bit simpler than that, to be honest. See, no it's... one said kind of to Nadine Dorries. Everybody just went, no. <laughs> I'm um, they, uh, um, it's, yeah, it's a bit simpler than that. It's, it's just that if you think about it, the positive force of the nucleus is what's keeping the negative sad boys in the shells, right? Said that, yep. So if the furthest out one is further away from said positive force, oh, yeah, okay. it's going to be a bit weaker. So it's easier for it to, to shed that electric. Can't hear the music very well. Exactly. So they're going to leave. They're going to go find another party where they can hear the music a bit better. But they won't be able to, probably. Why? Well, what if a Francium met another Francium? The music would be just as far away. Another Francium, yes, but say a chloride comes along and then they've just got one empty seat at the table and they're about to play a huge game of Catan and they just need one more person, that sad boy can slot right in there. Yeah, okay. Where's chloride? Chlori uh, chlorine is will be in group seven. 
It's not on mine. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, it's over there. Group 17. <laughs> oh. Sometimes they call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Would a Francium and a Francium react to each other? No. They, oh, it's they... one of those crazy Belgian... Whoa! <laughs> they have ghost ambulances. Spooky! <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's Uh-oh. good. The first time I heard one of those was on Halloween as well. <laughs> Oh, uh, there they go, off to collect Judith from our wanderings. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so a Francium and a Francium, if they were together, they would just be a block of Francium metal. Um, okay. We will talk about different um, bonds between atoms, including how metals are formed later on. So I studied all this at school. Um, yeah. God. Just goes to show, even the students that get good grades, it doesn't help. (laughs) No, no, it really doesn't. (laughs) Um, Cesium is the most reactive metal there is. Don't ask for any follow-ups, because I just read that off Wikipedia. Even though francium's lower than it? Yeah, I didn't really get that, but I thought I'd throw it in there in case it's true. (laughs) (laughs) Fair, I love it. Let's just start saying things just in case they're true. (laughs) Um, cesium is also very delicious with or without anchovies and croutons a cesium yes. saladum and its best friend Mark Antonium nice <laughs> what did the policium do him when he discovered the stolen goodsums he sees them <laughs> Probably Which cut that out. element <laughs> has to be removed from a woman by cutting her tummy open? Oh, a cesarium. A cesium section. Oh, I love it, Ron. Yes. <laughs> what do you call a one eyed <laughs> dinosaur atom? <laughs> uh, do you think he's cesium? <laughs> Carpium deum, cesium the day. <laughs> we need to stop now because people are turning the podcast off. It's horrible. Everybody's got tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> what you do probably remember. Oh, hang on. Well, no, Laura, don't. Just stop. Uh, I've got do... to say it now. <laughs> what atoms do you most find pirates on? The seven cesium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave a second so we can cut all that out. <laughs> you might remember from your science classes is putting the alkali metals into water Uh, to be honest i went to bishop fox's i'm not sure they let us touch anything no they probably would have done it at the front of the class but basically um it's 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 the most um illustrative um uh of 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 how the the reactivity goes up because if you throw lithium in the water it kind of starts farting and then it bibbles about on the surface a bit. And yeah. Yeah. But then if you throw um, a hunk of sodium into the water, it'll start zipping about the, the, the surface of the water and like bumping into the sides and stuff. Um, if you throw potassium into some water, it literally like catches fire and starts like jumping around. And then like you get to cesium. If you throw that into some water, it literally just explodes. Do they use it in bombs and stuff? No. Oh. I should um, idea I've had. No. Okay, so, so yeah, they get more reactive as they go down. And that's true of the whole periodic table or just these funky metals? I'm going to say something um, that I'm also going to Google it while I double check. What I think is true is that stuff on the left is more reactive as you go down and stuff on the right is less reactive. Oh. Yes, so, um, for example, if we take group seven, which is the halogens... Manganese, um, technetium... No, so group 17 is actually... uh, A lot of people... Like, I wasn't 
I was I was a joke. Most people do call that group seven. Um, fluorine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and tennessine. Yes. But tennessine they, is a noble gas. Um, then it shouldn't be in that group. Hmm. It's in the same uppy downy. No, it's not. What do you mean it's not? Well, it's not in the same uppy downy as the noble gases. No, but it's in it's in the noble gas colour. Show me again. Oh no, it's a different colour. Yeah. Why is that one in its own colour? Why is that guy in its own colour, Ron? I don't know. What does the colour mean? I don't know. Because bromine is also written... Oh, bromine's a liquid. Yes. Uh, I don't know what that colour means. That colour's not on the table of information. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's confusing, isn't it? It might be that that element is um, either theoretical or they've only produced it a handful of atoms of it once or something like that. Hmm, tennessine. It does sound like it was discovered in Tennessee, doesn't it? A little bit, yes. Anyway, as you go that down that up? group, as yeah. you go down that group, they get less reactive because if you think about it, um, they they react with stuff by luring in sand. It's boys, a synthetic not... chemical. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry, what were you talking about? I wasn't listening. I was googling. <laughs> Um, so if you think about it, they react with stuff by taking in sad boys, yeah. not by losing them. So the further away you are from the yeah. positiveness... The less you've got to pull stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it all makes kind of sense, right? Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd like um, like this lesson. It's a bit like playing Sagrada or something. you just got to get them all in the right order. So these guys hanging out in the middle, like your cobalt, your rhodium... They're just boring, really. Those, those are, yeah, those are the transition metals. They're all fairly samey, as far as I know. Yeah, all right. But then you've got some absolute classics in there, too. You've got your iron, your silver, your platinum, your gold, your copper. Yeah, nickel, bit of nickel. You've got roentgenium, which we don't know if it's a solid, a gas, or a liquid. Mm hmm. Rutherfordium. Oh, like Rutherford. Yeah, probably named after him. Mendeleev's brother. <laughs> well, now we're just saying lies. Um, <laughs> I thought I'd say it and just see if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Right, so the next bit that we are going to cover is the development of the periodic table. Need a ruler? A pencil? What? I was just Sorry. thinking that's how you'd go about developing it, wouldn't you? Well, that's not what Mendeleev did. Um, so, before the discovery of protons and neutrons and electrons, like before we knew what was inside atoms, um, they just tried to classify them by putting them in order of their weights. But it's impossible to weigh them. So no, that would have not. been hard. Um, no, that's not true. They measured them. Uh, they weighed them. Um, the uh, And then they, they tried to do this into an early periodic table. Um, they were incomplete because they hadn't actually discovered all of the elements at this point. Um, and there was one guy that kind of clocked on to the eight thing. There was a guy that was like, uh, oh, yeah, there's a rule of eight, you know, for those two rows. Yeah. What are you talking about? What? You know how there's eight in two of the rows? Yeah. There was one guy, like, you know, and we're, we're talking like... Um, what do you mean clocked on that there was a rule of eight? Like they well, weighed the same or something? Well, people were realising about the groups. How? Because they have all these similar properties. Oh, okay. So when they were like, instead of putting them in weight, they were lumping them in, hey, these guys do this, and then they noticed that there were eight groups uh kind of the other way around so they were putting them all in weight order and then they were realizing that oh every eighth one explodes when i put it in water and stuff Got, like that. yeah okay however that didn't quite work for several reasons a it only goes for the first like two rows and mm. then there's way more than eight 
and B, as I say, they hadn't actually discovered all of the um, elements yet, and C, they, um, they sorry, I just have to go let the cat back out of the room. <laughs> We'll never know what C is. Long then. Shoot. Do you know what you should have said to the cat when she was meowing then? Cesium and desistium. <laughs> <laughs> jokes are so much better than science. <laughs> but science jokes. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so... And then uh, number three, uh, the, not all of the atoms are in weight order. Because of neutrons. Because of neutrons, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dmitry Mendeleev uh, was... uh, He invented what we know as the modern periodic table. He was born in Siberia in the 1830s. I've just written next to that in my notes, bleak. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, In 1863, there were 56 known elements, with a new element being discovered at a rate of approximately one a year. Hmm, that's not bad going. No. Mendeleev became a teacher in 1867. He uh, he was writing... That's about right, isn't it? 37, you've started to give up on your dreams, so you think, I'll get a steady job as a teacher. Yeah, and then he was like, God, life's bleak, I'm going to write a book. So he started writing The Principles of Chemistry, which became the definitive textbook of the time. Ooh, smart. Get all those kids to have to buy your book. Double income. Yeah, and then because there was fuck all else to do in Siberia in the 1860s, he went to bed one night. What? Yes. He had a dream. Yes. Um, And he, he said, I saw in a dream a table where all elements fell into place as required. Awakening, I immediately wrote it down on a piece of paper. Only in one place did a correction later seem necessary. That's clever. He'd obviously been stewing on it and then had the idea when he was asleep. I don't believe, like, an angel gave him the idea. No, yeah, it's probably something to do with, you know, REM cycles clocking everything into place. However, he is making quite a large deal of this because when I was... um, uh, doing a bit of extra research on Wikipedia to flesh it out rather than just reading the syllabus he only put nine of them in his first <laughs> grade <laughs> so that's one bloody row mate what are you doing well, no a three by three grid uh, so he kind of made three up downers of three yeah fair <laughs> hey the current periodic table mm mm-hmm. Have we found... Do you only put something in it when you've discovered it? Or did we just make boxes for all of the amounts of electrons, like all the possibilities, and then go looking for those atoms, if that makes well, sense? Well, that's one of the things that Mendeleev did that set him apart from the previous periodic tables, is that he um, actively left gaps for things that he predicted would happen... Um, and he predicted what those elements would be like and was basically correct. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, like, yeah. once you know that it's following a keep adding one and then add a ring, you can sort of predict how many spaces you're going to need. Exactly, yeah. So I, I think, I can't remember exactly which element. There are three elements that Mendeley have just predicted that we hadn't discovered yet. Um, is there one named after him? There should be. I think Mendelevium is one, yeah. Mendelevium, yeah. Where's he hanging out? Might be even one of the... Uh, I think it's one of the later ones. I'm going to have a look for Mendelevium. Bear with me. Dream of California. Oh, polonium. That's the poison one. Radioactive, yeah. Radioactive. Radioactive. I can't find Mendelevium. Is it one of these? Oh, it's one of these ba- bad boys. It's an, a- it's an adenoid. Nice. 101. All right. I'm happy now I found it. Yeah, and then so he had his little grid of nine of them and then he just kept slotting them into that and eventually came up with the um, uh, the, the modern periodic table. And I was doing some more reading on it um, and, like, there was there was lots of petty scientist drama about it because, it, like, six months later, a dude in Germany also had the same idea. 
Um, and then like, it was like something like 30 years later, um, he was nominated, uh, or he was put forward to the board of the Nobel Prize. And then uh, one dude was just like, no, that was ages ago. We can't give him the Nobel Prize. Um, and then it turned out that he just uh, vetoed it because Mendeleev, uh, Mendeleev had shit all over some theory that he'd done at some point. Ah, oh, scientist drama. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, and then that's where we get to today. Okay. I felt like I kept my head above water there. I thought you'd like that one. There was nothing stupid. I think that's when science is best, is when there's no stupid made-up stuff. Define stupid made-up stuff. Like, I'm still not over this idea that the ground is pushing me away. And I realise we've got physics again next week already somehow, and I'm already annoyed at what (laughs) bullshit you're going to come out with. Um... (laughs) <laughs> exactly so this i liked this this was tidy it made sense i feel like i want to be friends with some of these little guys um yeah all right good work um let's go away for a bit and come back in time for the quiz Woohoo! ronnie honks it's one week later um I had a look at my notes this morning to um to to to, to, to prep for the quiz. <laughs> my notes consist of chemistry 3 in a really nicely drawn box. Lovely. Uh and then underneath I've written atom structure. And then uh next to that I've drawn a helium atom. You're just showing me atom structure move. Uh, no, other way. Is that mm. a helium? Yes. <laughs> and is. and that is the extent of the notes that I took in the last episode. So either it went in so well that I needn't have written a thing down, or good God help me on this quiz. Oh, I think you're going to get away with this. I think I've been quite lenient oh, in this good, quiz. Oh, good, because I'm very um, tired. Okay. Yes, it is pre-noon. It is. Every day this week I've had to get up and record by, like, 9am and it's killing me. I, I, like, and I know that that sounds super lazy because everybody else starts work at 9am, but I didn't get home from work until midnight last night. So I'm just... I've burned my candle at both ends and now my little candle's got a sore bottom and a (laughs) sore head. Um, So how many points are available in this quiz for people who like to play along at home? I think five. (laughs) He thinks five. Five is what we're going with for now. Okay, let's go. Question one. How many electron shells does sodium have? Sodium. Okay, so I need to look at my little book. Sodium, N-A. It's in row... Is that a row and a crossy? Yes. Uh, (laughs) It's in row three. It's got 11 electrons... So three, it would have... It is three. Two in the first one, eight in the second one, and then one sticking out on its own. All correct. No extra points for that, but well done. Yes, look at me learning. One point. True or false? Chlorine is more reactive than fluorine. Okay, so again, I need to look at my little... Periodic table. I'm learning to love my periodic table, actually. Um, Oh, excuse me, a little bit. Uh, (laughs) Chlorine is over here in column 17, often called 7. And it's near the top. And where's fluorine? Above it. What was the question? (laughs) True or false, chlorine is more reactive than fluorine. Um, Now, chlorine is below fluorine. As you said. Yeah. (laughs) And fluorine is above chlorine. (laughs) They rhyme. That is the question. Uh, I put it to you, sir, that Channel 4 needs privatising. Now, if... If chlorine was below <laughs> fluorine on the left-hand side of the periodic table, I would say, yes, it was more reactive. 
But because it's on the right-hand side, no, I think fluorine is more reactive. Correct. The yes. statement was false. My next question, and you've touched on it a little bit there, is why? Because... Because the guys on the left-hand side have sad boys wanting to leave their parties and the guys on the right-hand side have parties that will attract sad boys. And the further out the last space at the party is from the nucleus, the quieter the music... <laughs> so, so the less the sad boys want to come to the party... Whereas on the other side, you don't. You didn't ask about that. Don't try and explain it. But that that is that, isn't it? Yep. Can you <laughs> like filter out a, a modicum of nonsense <laughs> so that you're not talking about music? Is it magnets? It's like magnet, isn't it? Or charge? Is it's charge? It's like electrical charge. And because it's because the poly boys the. Po- po- Popadoms, what are they called? The protons. electrons and protons. That's it. The protons are in the nucleus, which is in the middle. So they're the ones with the positive charge trying to get a sad boy to come in. So if they are, if they're quite far away from the gap because of all the force fields, then the charge is less strong. Yep, it's further away, so it's harder to attract something in. I really feel like I understand this, Ron. No, that was really, really good. You didn't need to take any notes. Yes! So that is, yeah, so you're three for three so far. Um, Question number four. What happens when you throw potassium into water? The banana gets wet. (laughs) Is that your final answer? Um... Like, oh, I can't remember that. It was something like it either scoots about or it goes on fire. Is it do you like farty bubbles? <laughs> I'll give you half a buck. Yeah, um, potassium is like midway down the alkali metals, so it does do farty bubbles, but it just kind of catches fire and burns up. Oh, come on then, I said fire and farty bubbles. Yeah, but you, you did kind of go, you did kind of ask me. Not yeah, necessarily but, but when I do my test, you know, even if I put a question mark at the end <laughs> of my answer, they still have to mark my answer, right? They can't go, oh, she's put a question mark. She doesn't get the point. Well, what we like the like when I say it does farty bubbles, that's more just the fact it does produce hydrogen gas. It doesn't like bibble about on the surface like lithium does. Hang on, it makes hydrogen. Yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That's just the <laughs> chemical reaction that's going on. Don't. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving you half a mark for that. Okay, three and a half. And final question: How did Mendeleev come up with his version of the periodic table? <laughs> dream yes he did yes um for a bonus point um do you want to tell me something he did differently um to people that had tried before yes i remember this um he he left gaps for things that he thought would probably exist um he only started out with nine elements in his table and then he, yeah, he, he left gaps going like, that seems logical and he was right about like three elements or something. Yeah, nice. Very, very good. Yeah, a bonus point for you. So five and a half out of five. Oh, I've crushed that. A star, You Laura didn't Lex. need any notes. Ron... How good was I there on that quiz? Very, very good. You didn't need any notes, which was lucky. But I think (laughs) that episode especially, just like that kind of stuff makes sense. It's like a nice little puzzle. Things fit in, they slot into place. 
Um, I'm keen to see how that affects the stats that, that Carol has done for you. Yeah, so Carol, the gem that Carol is, has put together a little table of the quiz scores. She's tallying them up and seeing how we went. The shock of the week has to be that statistically, I've so far scored 53.4% on biology quizzes, 62.9% on chemistry, and a whopping 85% on physics. Yeah, I guess at point... I'm a physician! At point of statistical collection... One of the physics quizzes you'd done had two marks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got 50% of mm. them. Yeah, well, still, but I, I, what's that? Like a 95% I just got there in chemistry. Yeah, not bad. So, well, no, four and a half out of five, 90%. So the, that's going to be um, a big improvement there. I'm very happy. Thank you very much, Carol, for doing that and for sending it to us. Ron? Are you ready to sing? I'm not singing it. I wash my hands of it. It should at least be behind a paywall as far as I'm concerned. We don't have a paywall. We're just, We're just out for the people. Just, um, 30 quid a month on Patreon. <laughs> you get to hear the Mackie song once a month. <laughs> but the thing is, once I've sung them the Mackie song, people that have never met this dog will have this song stuck in their head. Oh, now I'm nervous about singing it. Yes, it's mental. <laughs> yeah. I didn't... So the tune is... It's Buddy Holly, isn't yes. it? Yes. And it goes... Oh, did you hear my tummy there? Is that your tummy? Made some... Yeah. That... Made some insane noises. That's my stomach going, do not sing this song, woman. <laughs> okay, this is the Mackie song. It goes... Mackie is... Mackie... He is a baby, lots of babies sewn into a dog shape. Mackie is the greatest song in town. Oh no, dog in town. That's not even right, actually. <laughs> uh, so there we go. There's your Mackie song. Mackie is Mackie. He is a baby, lots of babies sewn into a dog shape. Um, bestest, bestest little Mackie. Our question of the week, have you ever invented anything in a dream? Let us know on the social medias. Lex Education, everywhere you get your social media. Uh, well, let us know if you've ever... Sub-question. Yeah? Have you ever invented anything? Unlike Laura. Oh. Excuse me, I have invented something. You. Oh, you're such a dick about this. I can't believe you just brought this up. That is not in the notes of things to bring up. <laughs> you want to talk about... I invented an apple sorter, and Ron refuses to acknowledge that had I been born in a time before computers, I would have been an inventor. Have you ever invented... <laughs> you're such a little prickworm. Ugh. Well, that's a sour end to the episode. What was actually a lovely episode as well. Yeah, yeah. one of our nicer ones. <laughs> well, and you've ruined it, you little shit. Let us know if you've ever invented anything, <laughs> consciously or subconsciously. <laughs> and we'll see you next week for physics. Boo! Bye! Class dismissed. <laughs> your taglines now I said it <laughs> such a little ween you've been like this since you were born like oh, I'm so cute and then when people want you to be cute you're like mm, I won't be cute anymore class dismissed mm-hmm.